Rob, what's yeah, going man. on? Oh, I'm just sitting at home, just uh, enjoying a quiet Sunday, and I've been looking forward to being able to chat with you finally. Uh, even though it's only online, we can still, you know, get to discuss stuff and have a good time. Absolutely, man. Well, we appreciate you um, have, for having you on the show, man. And, Absolutely. Uh, we, also, we also appreciate our viewers. We understand we got people that are going to be listening to this and people that are going to be watching it. So we appreciate our viewers. We just want to thank everybody that's tuned in. Or Definitely. Tuned in, for sure. So I'm just going to let the world know about you real quick, man, because, you know, we got we got to start off with an intro. So I got something special for you. So uh -huh. um, what's up, everybody? Welcome and thanks for tuning in to Survival During COVID-19, Episode 2 on Woke Podcast. I am your host, Bling, and today we have a new special guest. He goes by the name of Robert Cottingham. Rob is a chef and a recipe developer. He enjoys baking and keeps himself busy by traveling around the world, specifically in Japan, where he travels frequently and always comes back home with something new. So, Rob, today we're going to discuss, you know, Rob, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so... The first first question I got for you is, how are you? How are you doing mentally? Uh, recently, I've actually been great. I've been uh, working hard to come up with new ideas for the business, and that's been keeping me focused. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I wake up with some goal I want to achieve, like even, even simple small things, like creating a new cookie recipe or even coming up with a new design, uh, it, it makes me happy. So, you know, even though it's really hard, sometimes it's lonely. And I get I get frustrated because I can't travel easily. Uh, it's been great to have some positive thing to focus on, right? And that's that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to think about what I can do while I'm stuck at home and I'm not working. I can come up with something myself and something you know make it myself, uh, create things. Absolutely. So, so I feel better about that. And that, by the way, I just. We lost Rob. <laughs> uh, What's up, Rob? Car. So I'm actually, I can drive now. Are oh, you got a new car now? I have. I got a, it's a little uh, Suzuki and uh, it's, it's old, but it, it, it runs well. Congratulations. Congratulations, my friend. It's big, been a while. It's been a long time coming. Absolutely, it's been man. A very long time. Hey, we appreciate all the viewers that are tuned in right now. We do. Um, you guys are, you know, you guys going to have a chance to ask any questions that you have. So if you want to pop your questions in, you can post them right here yeah, in the go chat. Go for it. And um, I get to decide which ones I feel like I should ask or whatever. But um, I got some questions over here that I'm going to ask Robert. So the first, you know, the second question I'm going to ask you is, what got you into baking cookies? Oh, you know, uh, it goes back a long way because I, ever since I was a kid, when I was uh, coming home from school or during the holidays, my mom would always be in the kitchen cooking for us. And mm -hmm. I used to enjoy helping my mom. And uh, I can remember wearing just the, the apron that was too big for me that my mom had to tie around my back, you know. And really? uh, that's, that's where it all began. And um, even my, my mom's mom, my granny used to cook as well. She used to make this great jam, this homemade jam. It was amazing. And my mom used to make uh, really nice biscuits, gingerbread, cookies. Wow. So we used to have that, especially at Christmas. He even made the gingerbread house, you know, like decorated. And, oh, that's beautiful. You know, you know what I mean? So she would do yeah. everything like that by hand. So it comes from my mom. And uh, okay. after I finished uh, university, I became a chef because I really wanted to go into restaurants. Right. And um, so I've been working in restaurants ever since. But this, since last year, I can't cook in restaurants anymore. So I'm stuck at sure. home, you know. Sure. Yeah, we, we understand, man. It's a tough, tough situation that we're currently in right now. And um, you can only do what you can. And, you know, right now it's like we, we, we're very um, limited with the things that we can do right now. So, hey, cheers to you, man. I see you drinking over there. Oh, the glass. Yeah. Cheers to you, man. Yeah, yeah cheers. Hey, so, um, you know, it's it's really dope that this came from your your mom and your grandmother and carried on to you like that's that's amazing you know what i'm saying that this this is like a, it comes straight down from the it's a generational thing it comes absolutely back in your family yeah you know so um how would you describe the kind of cookies that you bake so for all our listeners that are listening right now how would you describe you know 
like typical flavor, typical cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what, what sort of like, how do you describe the stuff you make? Like cookies. What, what do you put inside your cookies? What you put, you know, what's the recipes and stuff like that? Well, I try and go for some bold, big flavors. So, for example, like the one I gave you is like a really rich chocolate taste. Mm-hmm. And then you've got nuts as well, because I, I always look for good combinations. So you start with, say, um, your chocolate main flavor, and then you want something else to complement it. So I right. gave you the, the hazelnut and chocolate. And um, it's really like a nice, big, rich cookie. Like a, it's, it's like a New York style. This particular right. coffee uh, ch- uh, cookie has got like big chunks of chocolate in, not the small chips. So mm-hmm. it's like a really nice, big taste. And um, a lot of the time I try and use uh, some unusual ingredients. Like I've recently started this miso cookie, which is a Japanese oh, wow. salty taste. Yeah, it's really unique. You don't see it that much, but wow. it, just, it goes well with uh, lots of different combinations like chocolate, uh, fruit. So you can, you can experiment with so many different ingredients and that's what i'm doing that's Just nice man that sounds fusion. You know, yeah that sounds really good man because uh you know i know that you love to make cookies and you like to bake and stuff like that but i believe that cookies are a favorite compared to anything else right they are my ultimate favorite when it comes to dessert it's got to be cookies so that's my number one my number one choice right 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 so Rob sent me some cookies to anybody that's listening out there. Rob sent me some cookies uh, about a week or two ago now, and they tasted really nice, and they were, like, professionally packaged. You wouldn't even think, because of this pandemic that we're in right now, I don't know where he got the kit from, but he put everything together nicely, and it got delivered to my house, and it was nice. And um, so tell us about the recipe that you made, that you used to to create the cookie that you sent to me. Well... I had to uh, do a lot of research into just how to get that cookie to taste the way it did because you want it to be a little bit crisp on the edge but still right. soft in the middle. So so I looked into so many different recipes to try and find the best one, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because for uh, this kind of uh, cookie, there's just hundreds of recipes out there online. So right. you gotta, you got to research, you got to check what ingredients to use and you have to just follow the, the process. Absolutely. The stages. Otherwise, if you do something wrong or you don't quite get the right ingredients, it won't come out properly. It's not going to go right, right? Yeah. Right. So you make sure you get the right ingredients and the method. So um, we got someone asking over here in the chat. Um, I guess it's a question. Are you shipping? So that means like, you know, are you are you providing uh, cookies or anything yeah. you can bake overseas? Do you send anything? Are you able to? So we are, at the moment, we are in the process of creating a website, which will be an e-commerce site where you can actually click online to order them. Uh, I haven't sent any of them. Oh, I have sent some abroad. So if somebody did want to order from abroad, I can happily do that for them. So that's not a problem. Okay. So I can get the packaging and I can get them ordered. There it is. Rob says it. All right, man. So um, what's the day in the kitchen like for you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's a... What's a full day like when you go in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? You got to bake or you got to cook or whatever you got to do. What is it like for you? How is it? it? How, how do you go in there? What sort of mindset do you have when you step inside? You know, yeah. tell us, man, let us know. Yeah, I want you to know because a lot of people don't quite really understand all of the things that happen when you go into a professional kitchen. Because right. usually you're working in a team, okay? So there could be at least eight or nine chefs working with you. So everyone's got their own job to do in the kitchen. They've all got their own specific area that they control. So I was like usually prepping the veg before service. So that was my job. But when you get in, you kind of go into this mentality, you know, like a mindset where you've just got to focus exactly Uh on what you need to do because you're running always under a tight schedule. So you've got to make sure that you, you know, you've done everything that you need to do before you start for the when actually the customers come, you know, when when service begins, because if you don't have everything ready, you're mm-hmm. not going to be able to get through it. And service can last for about three or four hours from say right. 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then you've got your customers. So everything needs to go smoothly and it requires everybody to really cooperate. But, you know, in some kitchens, you're going to get some uh, a lot of intensity. There might be a customers complaining or maybe the waiters send something back so you've got to be able to not be affected if there are 
you know, issues that come up sometimes. So it's really right, important right, right, right. to stay cool. But to answer your question generally, uh, I miss the atmosphere because it's such a it's such a great feeling when you're working with people who love food as much as you do. Right. And you got you often have you know music playing because everyone loves to hear music when they work, and you can do that because the customers can't actually hear what's going on. So mm -hmm. the atmosphere is just really really good, really intense, and everybody's working as hard as they can. So you kind of feed off their energy. Absolutely. And when you when you cook on your own you don't feel the pressure of so many people around you. And it's a little bit more laid back. So, right. so you enjoy, it. so you yeah. enjoy being around people and, you know, yeah. having to follow like rules and you obviously got regulations and things that you need to follow on a day to day basis in order to make sure that the day turns out good because yep. there's some things that can go wrong and there comes Rob and, you know, he tells people, Hey, this is how we're doing this. We got to do it like this. We have to adjust this or make some, you know, decision changes on this or whatever decisions. So you're more like a leader because you have to be around people and you have to, you know, tell them, make orders like, hey, this is what we're doing here now. We got to change this around. Health and safety, as mentioned in the chat. So, yeah, you know, that's that's very important. And it shows us that you're very focused with where you're going and what you're doing because you follow through the, the, the regulations to do things the right way. So yes, yeah. thanks for sharing with us how your day-to-day -day activities are, man, because we definitely need to understand and know what it's like. I actually worked one time I was working in a restaurant, you know what I'm saying, way oh, back no way. two years ago. Yeah, yeah, I worked in a in a Marks and Spencer's. Um, you know, I was in a cafe for a little bit. I kind of moved around a little bit in different departments, but yeah. you know, I, I understand what it's like to be in there and you got the chef and you got you have to listen to this person. They tell you that this is what needs to be done. And time is a factor. You got to make sure that you're doing things accordingly because if you miss out and if you're late on something, things are not going to turn out right. So, hey, appreciate that, man. So um, the next thing is, are you taking advantage of the pandemic and making use of your spare time right now? So you got yeah. so much time. How would you describe what it's been like having so much time on your hands? You know, you're not able to do the day-to-day -day activities that you're used to doing so how are you managing your time what are you what are you doing with your spare time right now yeah so uh at the moment i am developing my own website because i want it to be really really nice really professional and i want to create um, a really nice uh user experience so that when they go to the website they know about me mm -hmm. that there is enough information about who i am and how that affects my business the cookies a bit about my history and uh, I wanted to gain information from it. So if they're curious about ingredients, I want to provide the information. So right. it's a little bit like uh, I've been taking a, taking a look at how I can really create the best experience, the best business. Uh, and I don't want to rush it. So over the next two months, hopefully we're going to be going to see an end to these restrictions in two months. Absolutely. So you reckon in two months time, we'll be ready to go go live with the new website and people can actually really experience it for themselves right 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 yeah for sure because i know you're working on uh you're working on your website i know you told me about that before and you're telling everybody right now so what can people expect to see uh when you when you officially launch your website what can they expect from that so uh, for a start there's going to be a new name i can't tell you the name right now you've got to watch this space but okay. there's going to be a whole new website the the instagram it's going to be updated so we'll have a lot more information. There'll be a lot more photography because I want to show them step by step what, what's involved. So right. that that's something. And uh, just it's going to be an amazing website, amazing design. So it's going to look great. And the content's going to be great too. So that's Absolutely. what they can expect in about two months. Absolutely. I like that, man. I like that. All right. So um, do you think this is the right time to start a business right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, I'm very lucky to have this opportunity to have free time where I can actually come up with my ideas. And right. uh, if you look out there, it's really hard for people who lost their job. I think um, if you can find something you love and, you're, and you want to do it every day, if uh -huh. you're lucky enough, you should go for it because it's actually horrible out there right now with people losing their jobs. So if they can get something they actually really want to do, they should just do it. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now with, uh, mm -hmm. with the cookies. 
Right, so, right, right. I know so, I can spend all my days doing it and it won't bug me because it's something I love to do. Right, right, right. Well, this, you know, it's good to know that you're making use of this time that you got right now because this is, I, I feel like this is the right time for you to really do as much as you can, but also, you know, be easy on yourself at the same time because we got to oh, face so many difficulties during this time that we're in. But if you kind of got your mind together and you know what you want to reach, like the goals and stuff like that, it's possible. You can really do whatever you want to do. Like, because you got to make use of this time. You're at home. You're not doing much. You know, you, all you do is get on your laptop sometimes and kind of open up and see what's going on in the world. You see the news. You go back to your laptop. The day's just, it's the it, same. It's not repetitive, it's not isn't it? Right. You don't feel like you, you're just chasing your tail, kind of running around in circles. Whereas if you have a, a big goal, you know. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So um, let's talk about Japan, man, because. I'd love to. You know, what is it that stole your heart in Japan? I know you love Japan so much. So everybody that's tuned in right now, let me tell y'all a little something about this guy, man. This dude loves Japan. You know, yeah. he's from the UK, but he, he loves to travel. He loves to, you know, to be on a plane, going to Japan, eating the food and meeting the people, talking to them, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? And so let's talk about that for a little bit, man. I know you love Japan so much. Because before the pandemic started, I would always see you traveling, going back and forth. Exactly. Uh, Japan and Korea. So talk to us a little bit about that. Tell well, uh, Japan will be my number one favorite country to visit because it wow. is, yeah, I could say that uh, honestly, because it's such a, it's a it's, for one thing, it's a beautiful country geographically. The landscape is amazing because they've got mountains, they've got forests, uh, beaches and the it's an island, so it's, it's sea everywhere. And uh, the other mm -hmm. thing is everybody's really respectful. So they always right. listen to you. Whatever you want to say, they, they listen. They take their time. And they, are, they, they seem to care about everything. So details, whatever they're doing is done as best as they can. So it's, but it's all about details. And everything is very well designed. So, example, Japanese, uh, Japanese cars or Japanese buildings it's all very neat everything fits in with the the landscape so mm -hmm. i just love the way it feels you know just walking down the street if it, it, it gives you a pleasant feeling it's uh it's you know even in a busy city like tokyo is the world's biggest city but everybody right. everybody kind of respects each other and there is a uh you know you don't get too much noise because everyone's very quiet so that's a nice thing. You know, you go into the subway or train and nobody's speaking loudly on their phone because they don't want to upset the, the other guy, the other passengers. Right, right, it's right. It's a kind of mentality you see it everywhere. And that's something which I found really special about Japan. It's uh, wow. very unique. So they're, they're very um, they're respectful people. They have yeah. their manners. You know, they yeah. care about other people. They try to, you know, make everybody feel special as we all should make everybody feel special. I, I found that... Really, yeah. whenever I go there, that's how it is. Wow, that's amazing, man! Thank you for sharing with us. I, I would sure love can, yeah. the people who are listening now to be able to experience that too. If they can go to Japan, they can see what I'm talking about because that I'm telling you uh, how I, how it is. So, absolutely. Once the pandemic clears, of course. So don't make any travel arrangements <laughs> right now. Yeah, <laughs> true. That make is sure true. Go after this thing slows down, then you know. Absolutely. I'll, I'm going to definitely go myself. I've never been to Japan, so I'd love to visit, man. And, you know? Yeah, so you, you, might, you might not have been to Asia very much, but if you are planning to go to Asia, then Japan has to be on your itinerary. It's got to be the country you visit, you know, at least once, if not, if not more. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to visit, man. All right, so, um, all right, so what I got for you here is Let's talk about the picture of you wearing the Japanese Japanese inspired clothes. Oh the yeah, right. To promote, to promote the podcast show, having you on and stuff. So we seen you wearing, you know, Japanese kimono. Is called. Is that right? Yeah, it's kimono? called a kimono. It's correct. Yes. Right. So, know? what can you tell us about the, the Japanese fashion? Tell us a little more about that. Come on, let us let us understand. A little yeah. Bit. Um, for example, I was wearing this traditionally designed uh, Japanese kimono, which is based, which is worn in the summertime because it's a light cotton material, right. and the fabric is really easy to wear because it's soft, 
and it's it's usually worn in the summer because Japanese summers is quite hot. So they wear the kimono when they are going to the bath or when they are going somewhere like the restaurant in the evening because they don't want to wear yeah. heavy clothing. And this kimono, the kimono uh, is one of the most iconic designs for Japanese clothing because it goes back maybe 400 years to the time of the, the emperors and the geishas or whatever. And people are still wearing kimono now because it's such an easy to wear uniform because, you know, it's just one piece and anybody right. can wear it because it doesn't matter what size you are because it fits. It's like one size. It's like so, one size? They didn't have to like... Size. You don't have to no. have it, you know, tailored exactly to your shape. Right, right, right. So it's, it's a really easy to wear, you know, uniform. You just got to tie it together with the belt. And that oh, way, wow. you know, it doesn't come open. Wow, that's crazy. It's, it's really cool. And, uh, and I'm glad you liked the picture because the one I chose was really bright. And you don't see right. men, you don't see men wearing this kind of costume that much, really, outside of Japan. So, that's amazing. So you, you, were, you were happy to wear that? Where, where yeah. were you in the picture when you posted that? Was it was you know, you, I was in, a, was in Japan? It was not in Japan, it was in London. There's a Japanese garden near Notting Hill. And uh, I okay. chose that, that area to have the photos taken because it was the closest to Japan that you'd get in London, you know? So you have the waterfall and right. the birds. There's some peacocks. So it looks a bit like a Japanese yeah. garden, you know? Um, but Yeah, I like, yeah. So, I was going to uh, say, um, I, like, I like how it's like everywhere in the world you go, I mean, especially out here in like in the UK and stuff like that, or, you know, in, in the States, you got like uh, li Little China, you know what I'm saying? So you got a Little Chinatown. Um, that's it. I, as you said, there's a little Japanese place in London too, right? Yeah. So do you go there frequently? Do you, do you usually go there to get inspired? I do. I, I go to the, the Japanese neighborhood in West London sometimes when I want to try and get Japanese ingredients, the food right. from the, the grocers. Uh, that, that inspires me a little bit. So I, I use some of the ingredients to make the cookies. And uh, the garden was just a wonderful place to walk in the summer when it was warm. You know, you get outside. It was very beautiful. It was peaceful. Right. So, yeah, I did. And I'm actually wearing Japanese, uh, you can't see it that well, but this is Japanese I'm wearing now. It's like okay. a Japanese graphic designer. Wow. Yeah. Nice. It's got That's this really nice. cool design on the back. Okay. Oh, yeah, we see that. We see okay. that. That's yeah. nice, man. That's really dope. So we got a question in the chat. It says, what's your favorite place in Japan? Oh. That's from Miss Panty. If I said that right. Yeah, that's a cool, cool question. So, Miss Hansi, I'm going to say it is uh, the city of Fukuoka because Fukuoka is not as big as Tokyo, but it's got all the great food that you would expect in Japan. So it's got amazing sushi because they're right by the sea. Fukuoka is right at the so southern part of Japan. And right. you go there and it's just this amazing design city which has got... Uh, two sides to it and you know ramen so ramen's from fukuoka so the ramen oh. soup the noodle soup they eat in japan oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've it, heard of that i think so. yeah this amazing pork pork based soup it comes from fukuoka so that's their speciality if you like but right. everything there is great and um particularly that area the people are a bit more laid back because it's not busy like tokyo so you can actually you know if you want to talk to people you're lost it's really easy to get directions because everyone's friendly. So as much as I like Tokyo, it's a little bit hectic. And I'd rather spend Absolutely. time in a smaller city in Japan. And that's why I'd say Fukuoka would be my favorite. Oh, so that's a city in, in, uh, in Japan, right? That's yeah. A city in Japan. Yeah. Okay, okay. Is that like a small city or big yeah. city? Yeah. I think it's only, it's like compared to Tokyo, Fukuoka is about 1.5 million, million people. So it's fairly small. Right, right. So we got a question here. What else do you like? Do you like to bake? Do you bake besides cookies? Oh, well, I, I recently, uh, during the lockdown, I was baking a lot of ch uh, banana bread because you okay. always end up with a lot of black bananas that are too soft to eat. So I ended up turning yeah, those, you, you know what I mean? Them. Yeah, when they go bad. The really, really mushy ones. You can turn it into some amazing banana bread. Right. And, uh, 
I'll tell you a tip I learned when I was in a, uh, one of the restaurants I worked in is that they would actually, they would fry the banana bread and then they can serve it with, you know, you can eat it with, with eggs like you would normal bread. So it's actually like this. Right. Yeah, it tastes really good because you know that the texture of the banana bread is really soft. But when you fry it, mm -hmm. it kind of goes crisp. So I love to bake banana bread. Also, you fry it? You can you actually fry it, yeah. It's like, um, you know, plantains? I don't know if yeah. you've ever um, tasted plantains, but, you know, I love to fry them. Like, you chop them up, fry them up, then get them right. They look like bananas, but they're not bananas. Of course. They look very similar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's another thing I like to bake. And I, and I was baking some uh, pizza dough. I was making, like, last year I was doing a lot of pizza. So that was really fun, too, because you okay. just create the dough, and then you have a choice of toppings. Pretty cool. And I, and I actually Absolutely. even made the pizza in my frying pan because you can actually create a nice pizza just using a frying pan instead of the pizza oven. Oh, you can use it by frying it in the pan? Exactly. You get the frying pan really hot and then you can actually cook the crust of the dough in the, in the pan. So wow. That's my tip. Try that, man. It's awesome. Taking notes. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's, it is that's, crazy. That's awesome. So um, what's the culture difference between uh, the UK and Japan? What is, what's different? You know, you, you've been in, in the UK yeah. for some time and then you go over to Japan, you see how they live, how they do things. Obviously you've touched down on like their manners, how they are as a people, as people and stuff like that. But what, what are they like as far as the difference between the culture and the UK? What's the difference? Oh, well, uh, so for example, we're talking about the difference in their culture is as a country, I think that they, they actually have a, a mentality of being Japanese, which, right. which means that they, they act as though they are just one people all together mm -hmm. who all have the same kind of mentality. So I think in the UK, we are more focused on individual choice and individual freedoms. But mm -hmm. in Japan, they kind of have an idea that everybody is doing everything because they are Japanese. So everyone's coming together. So they're like... A, united people in that sense right so maybe okay. we don't have such that feeling in england where everyone likes to be by themselves or doesn't want to follow the group whereas in yeah Japan, yeah, it's yeah. About being a little, little reserved and you know yeah. kind of not be yeah yeah, yeah i get it so wow. that's, yeah they're, they're, they're quite different in lots of ways i already gave you the example that they don't like to talk on the phone in the subway because for them that would be rude you know so they don't just think about themselves, but they think about other people. That's great. And, you know, we're wearing masks right now. Right. And, it, and a lot of people didn't want to wear a mask when they said, you know, you've got to wear a mask in the shop. Mm -hmm. But when I was in Japan, you would see people wearing masks all the time. Like, it was just normal for them. If, if there is a pandemic, which there right. is, obviously, they would automatically wear a mask. Whereas in this country, we take a lot longer to, to really accept that you Thank should you wear mean. a mask. Yes, yes. I, I agree on that. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, man. It's really, really good to to know and understand about other cultures and how different things can be. You know, I'm very interested in different cultures, man. Like, I love... I know you people. are, yeah. I love, you know, knowing about other people, what they do, what they eat, how they do things and stuff like that. And people, if anybody that's listening right now, me and Rob used to actually live in the same building. So, you know, I'll see him like nearly every day. Going yeah, we to work did. Or me going to work or something like that. I'd see him and talk to him and have yeah, a conversation. We and we always had great conversations together. You know, we always would, would discuss a lot of things. And I've always found Rob to be an interesting person to speak to because he's got so many things that are, you know, that are happening in his life. And he's he's a person that's always on the go. Like, you know, oh, so glad. I, I appreciate that of you, man. And for you to be on the show today. So it's been um, awesome. It's been good, man. It's been yeah. good. So, so, would would you open your um? Would you open a cookie shop in Japan one day? That is something I've thought about because I know how much they love food. So for me, if I could eventually, once I make a success of it here, I would mm -hmm. love to think that it could be transported out to Japan, and perhaps, perhaps I could open up my own uh, Rob's Cookies in Japan because for me, I know they would probably love it. So. And I would, I'd want to live out there at some point and work out there. So that wow. would be something I'd love to do. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. That's at the moment, we'll, we'll keep it in the UK because 
that's where we are and it's hard to travel so right right we have no option right now yeah you kind of you know like i understand you like to travel a lot and you always like being up and down and right now yeah i i see actually on facebook i see that you make some visitations to the airport sometimes yeah you know, before the pandemic true. to get inspired i see you um, that is true there. yeah 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 you, what, what, tell us a little bit more like what why you go there you know like you spend some time at the airport and oh the observe to see how things are going sure it's the right time to travel talk to us a little bit about that yeah well because i live i live close to the heathrow airport so for me um i can just take the bus down there and and just i actually like to see what's going on even even now it's a bit quiet but i want to see if people are still traveling where they're going and what people are doing because that's something i'm always interested in so you go to the airport it's, it's like a really cool place because there's right. always so much energy and people are moving around, coming from other countries. So I just want to see what's going on, even though I can't really travel. I just wow. got a fascination with, you know, the airports and That's dope. being able to travel. So I think, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like trying to be inspired by buildings. Like, you know, the feeling of that building, you know, the, the planes and the staff. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just by going there and seeing the planes being inspired by people coming off the plane and other people exactly. boarding, just that vibe. I love airports for real. I really, I really do. I don't like the stress when you're coming back or when no. you're going, especially no. when you're going. But um, when you, when you, when you, when you relax and you come back and shit, it's kind of you know, it's it's good to 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 be inspired by that. Yeah, I mean, I I think so too. So um. That's nice to know that you would open up a shop in Japan one day and you plan on living out there or whatever. That's that's awesome. It's good to know that. Um, so where do you see yourself uh, five years from now? So five years from now, um, I mean, I'm a little bit of a family man, I think, at heart. So as much as I like being single, I'm free to travel around. I think eventually in five years' time, I probably will. I'll have started up a family of some in some way. And in that case, I have to settle down in one country. It'll either be Japan or it'll be UK. Okay. So that, and once I've got a family, it could be a, a family business because then, of course, I'll have my my part, my wife, and maybe my children eventually. So the idea is that it could be a business which can be passed down or run by by the family as well. Oh, that's really nice. I've always thought about that, man. I've always like that's always been my plan. You know what I'm saying, like. To do yeah. things in the family, that's the best thing. I, I don't understand when people say, you can't do business with the family because things <laughs> don't go wrong. Sure. You're going to argue and not sure. talk again. Like, I believe that because your family are those that you learn to know from the very beginning. Or yes. somebody you meet and, you know, you get married to, you have babies with. How, how can you not make, you know, a business with your with your wife or your partner? You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely, you can so that that's and it'll be a strong business too because you got one individual and another individual with both different mindsets and you're going to bring all of that together and combine it you know what i'm saying so it's that's good man it's good to know family business absolutely by by around 5 years i mean you know that gives me enough time to to really get get things going get the the groundwork done doesn't it absolutely absolutely so um i know you've been to japan but you've also been to korea so Oh, right. We'll talk let's, about that. Let's talk about that a little bit. Firstly, my, my question personally is, I don't want to sound stupid, but I, I, I understand how the world works and stuff and the maps, countries here, country here, whatever, whatever. Yeah. What's the distance, what's the difference between Korea and Japan? So how well, far they, are they on the, on the map when you look at the map? Yeah, when you look at the map, you're going to see Korea is, is, is here to the side. And then mm -hmm. Japan is a little bit... Uh, kind of touches very close to Korea. So actually, they're only about 100 kilometers apart from the... Oh, wow. So they're, they're quite close geographically. So they've always been neighbors. So you could drive out there, like from, from Japan to Korea? You can not You can actually... Uh, you can't drive, but you can take a boat or you can fly. They're very close. Oh, so it's, it's like, like an hour, hour and a half plane ride. So it's like going from uh, England to Ireland or something like that? Exactly. Yeah, the, the closest uh, the closest flight is at one hour and a half. All right. Oh wow, that's awesome, man. That's nice. So, yeah. talk to us a little bit about Korea. So, you know, you were teaching out there, I believe. 
And yeah. you told us you were, you were out there teaching children. So talk to us a little bit about that. What it were was you really, teaching? Yeah. Well, I enjoyed teaching some of the time. Uh, you know, I was uh, teaching for one year in a language school. Mm -hmm. So we had all kinds of different people actually coming for lessons. And you'd get like older people who didn't really have much English. And then you get younger students who wanted to pass English for their exam or for their job. Okay. So, and you know, sometimes people didn't really care about their studies because they were just doing it because they had to. And you get oh, these... because they just wanted to learn uh, English? Yeah. Right, so right. So you they get, were not you... taking it seriously. Yeah, so that was the problem. Like they didn't really have that much motivation. Okay. So we had to kind so, of think, how are we going to make it entertaining for these guys who, are, who would otherwise, they would be bored and they might not even show up. So we, mm -hmm. we just had to keep it interesting in terms of what we discussed with them and their kind of topics, the uh, exercises we got them doing so that they actually enjoyed coming. Someone said, wow, you, also you're a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob is a master at many things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Make them. yeah. <laughs> I, I actually knew Rob as a teacher. You know, I knew him as a teacher uh in 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 um in New Molden when we were living yeah, exactly. in the same building or whatever. And I think you were given like I think it was home tutorials. I'm not sure what it was exactly. Yeah, it was home tutorial and private lessons for really like primary school kids who wanted to go on to the exam, the secondary schools. Right. Yeah. That and that, that, that was when I knew that was really nice because I had that free time in the day, so I wasn't always busy. Yeah. That was uh, absolutely a good time. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. So, um, okay, so Rob, tell us, man, how can people reach you? You know, you're gonna have people on here, so we're gonna, you know, this is gonna be posted up as a video, and also we're gonna chop it up as audio. So there's gonna be people that are gonna listen to you, and they're gonna wanna know more about you just by listening to you, but they're going to want to reach you to. So you yeah. got to post up the um, social media. You got to spell it out to the people. I can post it up for you here, but you got to right. spell out your social media account so people can follow you and find you. So I guess everyone's on Instagram who's listening now. So we're going to give them my Instagram first. Right. So I'm just posting that for you right now. So and you can just spell it out to the people. Yeah. So it's Rob's underscore cookies. Rob's underscore cookie. So that's uh, R O B S. Yeah. Score cookies. You know, and um, follow Rob. So yeah, go ahead and follow. And I'm going to yeah. keep every every day posting new material, pretty new cookie uh, recipes that they can they can ask about. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Rob, man, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. But I'm not going to let you go just yet. No, we're gonna let this run a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So we want to talk to you a little more, man. So we want to talk about music for now. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I know this is completely Go different and separate from from cookies, but you may yeah. be making some cookies and you want to put some music in the background. You know, so you get inspired. <laughs> yeah. And keep it going. So yeah. What sort of music do you like? What music are you into? Oh, um, I. I have a real soft spot because I grew up in the 80s and uh, I was listening to 80s music a lot. Well, oh, you're in the 80s, 80s and yeah. 90s. So for yeah. me, the, the music I love is stuff from that era. So anything like Michael Jackson, Prince, or even Mariah Carey will be just great to have on in the kitchen because right. it's just a very upbeat, uh, nice rhythms, uh, positive, uplifting stuff. And uh, it's a lot. I also listen to a lot of 90s hip hop right. because. That as well is like a really uh, good, you know, like uh, something like a tribe called Quest. We used to have yeah, it on yeah. in the restaurant a lot. And people just love the uh, old school, I guess, old school uh, hip hop music. Uh, and lately I've been listening to a lot of De La Soul. And wow, that's a really nice, really uh, chilled, really chilled music. Uh, oh, good yeah, good yeah. samples. So if anybody wants to know about what I listen to, again, I'm happy to tell them which tracks which tracks I like. Absolutely. So I got a question here. Um, what, who, who do you listen to today? So uh, we, we don't know when, when you listen to Tribe Called Quest and the other yeah. mentioned Mariah Carey. Today particularly, who do you listen to? Who are you listening to today? 
So there's this singer uh, who was around in the 70s. She's called Rose Royce. She was a disco singer, I think. Okay. So she had, she had this really big hit called Wishing, Wishing on a Star. And uh, I recently just listened to this really nice, funky remix of it, which is a bit okay. sped up. So it's a bit more like a... Because the original song is a ballad. It's slow. But the remix makes it sound a lot more funky and like uh, more lively. So that's what I was listening to right today. Right. Uh, just on an old mixtape I had. <laughs> Wow. So nice. I, I still listen to tapes. I still play tapes, CDs. Because, you know, in my car, I've got a CD deck. So I just play play from the CDs. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's you a, place the CDs in there. That's old school right there. It's crazy <laughs> because it's now old school, but it, it wasn't that long ago when we were no. listening to CDs and buying CDs. That's so, so it's true. Like, it's crazy, man. That's that's really, really crazy. But um, it's, it's dope that you're able to bring out the collection that you had before and throw it in there. You know, that's, that's awesome to know, man. So we got new people that are tuned in right now. For yeah. Let's just tell them what's going on. This is Robert Cunningham. I am your host bling. And this is woke podcast working on killing everything. we got a special guest in here today, man. His name is Robert, a chef and a recipe developer. So Rob, man, I want to ask you one question. All right, so if you had to create your own recipe, right, what would it be and what would it be on? So it may not be for cookies. It's got to be something to do with bacon. What would that recipe be? Talk to me about that. Oh, okay. So uh, if I was going to create a new recipe that was something uh, I, I loved, something I knew other people would love, mm -hmm. then uh, probably my number one choice would be, uh, would be a pie. Because I can keep it, I can keep it interesting, you know. Mm. So we'll start with just the the pie crust, which okay. is going to be a really nice pastry, okay? Right, right, right. A nice uh, buttery pastry like you get when you have a chicken pie. Okay. So you you have like a typical chicken pie. It's usually chicken and sauce, and there might be some mushrooms. Oh, that's nice. That sounds a little bit like uh, it sounds a little bit like you know the ones they do at Greg's, the the one with exactly. The, the, with the chicken, what's it called? The it's called a bake? chicken bake. Right, right, right. And you yeah. know, yo, those those um those are really nice. Like when you eat it or steak bake, it's steak so bake. nice. Yeah, but um, I like the chicken one, man, with the mushroom and all of that. <laughs> I love it, man. I love pastries. Yeah, so I would want to create this amazing pie, which is going to have not just chicken, but you'd have vegetables. It's it's stewed in some wine and some, you know, uh herbs you're gonna get your herbs in there hey so when you when you cook the pie and then you cut it open you're gonna have this lovely aroma coming out from all those vegetables wow and the juices and then the chicken and then you can have i don't know if you like gravy but you can create some really nice beef gravy to go with it yeah gravy oh, nice gravy is nice sometimes you know we're gonna have some gravy and uh i know it's a little bit old-fashioned but i also love to have mashed potatoes okay I love you want to make some nice mashed potatoes, you can add some Parmesan in there. You can, you can actually finish it off in the oven. So the mashed potato first on the stove and then cook it in the oven under the grill. So you get nice kind of like gratinated. It's, it goes crispy on top. Put some breadcrumbs on there. It's like it's comfort food, but it, it just uh, it, it's nutritious as well. So oh, that's nice. got maximum flavor. Wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Hey, one day, man, one day when I see you next, man, I don't know when that's going to be because no. this this pandemic is kind of crazy right now, but I would love to see you, dude, and hang out with you, you know what I'm saying, listen to yeah. some music, you know, show me some, some recipes, what you make and bake and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? It'll be nice to just spend the day with you because you're, you're a really interesting person, and I, I would not take that away from you, dude. I just want to say keep doing what you're doing, man. We appreciate you everything that you're doing and we understand it's a hard time right now but that's that's the whole purpose of me starting out this podcast for us to discuss to have people like you that are doing something working towards greatness working on killing everything you know what i'm saying you want to make sure that you master what you're doing and go further man go ahead and do everything that you're supposed to do so this is your purpose this is what you're supposed to be doing which is baking and providing to the people because now people are going to be coming to your restaurant or coming to you and you serve them with um, cookies and everything that you're doing. 
know what I'm saying? So this this is amazing. Keep keep doing what you're doing. You know, I, I don't know what, what's going to happen after this. I don't know, you know, how, how far you're going to take this, but I truly believe that you're going to go far, man. And, and that's just me letting you know, man. That's how I personally feel about you. And uh, this is a kind of a, it's the reason why I do it, just so that you can get the, the response from people, the connection. Right, 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 right. You know, so, Rob, listen, man, this is Woke Podcast, man. I want you to tell us, man, you being here, you've been on this interview virtually with me right now. What do you think you can give the people by being on this on this podcast? How do you think that you being on this interview is going to benefit people? Because the episode is survival during COVID-19. We understand and we, we are all heartbroken with the loss of people that we've lost during this COVID-19. You know, it's it's a blessing to, to be here right. today because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But um, as we're here today, we got to do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? We have to just keep going, keep working things out, stay safe, of course, put your mask on, wash your hands, all of that. But um, I just want to know, what, what would you do for the people? What would this what does this benefit you with being on this podcast? How does it benefit you? Being on you know, uh, if I can say this, it's like uh, it's my mission to create something from what I love doing anyway, what I've been doing since I was a kid in some way. Mm -hmm. It's my mission to build something more and to build a business that other people can enjoy. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That's, that's really nice, Rob, man. Listen, man, before you go, Rob, I just want you to say this out loud right now, right? So you're on Woke Podcast. I just need you to say, working on killing everything. Come on, let me hear that. Okay, so this is Rob, Rob Cottingham, and I've been on uh, Woke Podcast today. So it's working on killing everything, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, man. You heard it from <laughs> Rob, man. We truly appreciate everybody that tuned in, man. We appreciate y'all. Be on the lookout for Robert's cookies and his shop and you know, all these things that he wants to do. We wish the best for Rob. Rob, it's been a pleasure having you on here, man. I've loved it. Talking I've to you, man. And I wish to, to have more conversations with you, man. Stay in touch. You know where to get me at, man. You know where to see me and talk to me. So call me up. Let's have a conversation. Let's discuss, man. And send me more cookies and everything that you bake. Yeah, you know, it's my man. pleasure. All right, dude. So take care, man. Good to have you on, man. Stay safe. You too. Oh, hold on one second. So we got somebody here that just said, Success for Woke Podcasts, also Rob's Cookies. We appreciate you, Miss Tanti. I, I hope I said that right. Thank you so much for that. Much love to you. And tune in next time for episode three. You know, we're going to have more people in here. So we, we truly appreciate y'all, man. All right, Rob. Yeah, you have a great day. And uh, we'll still speak soon. And I'm going to get some more cookies on the way to you. All right, dude. Take care, man. Enjoy your wine and finish it up, dude. Cheers, Drink man. up. Cheers. All right, dude. Much love. <laughs> All right. Much love. Peace. All right.